Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Roan Farrow and today I have a question for you all. How do we collectively feel about video game remakes? In the past we've had some really good ones and of course some not so good ones. The reason I bring this up is today's topic is a game that is dear to my heart. Age of Empires and the respective rem remaster Age of Empires Definitive Edition. We're going to be comparing these two games based off three categories. Gameplay, sounds, and graphics. We want to see if the Definitive Edition is definitively better than the original. But before we can dig into that, we need to go and get a little bit of history on Age of Empires. So follow me as we take a trip back. Age of Empires was released in 1997 by the now defunct studio Ensemble Studios. They had used the 2D sprite engine called the Genie Engine to create the game. This absolutely was one of my childhood staples and my first real entry into the real-time strategy or RTS territory. I absolutely love these titles, thanks to this game. When the reviews first came in, what was said about this game was the target of it being a Warcraft and Civilization marriage didn't quite hit that mark. However, the game was still phenomenal, good enough for them to get high scores in the reviews. This translated directly into high sales for the game, which then also translated into an expansion for the game. This was what you would say the Rise of Rome, which was actually the name of their first expansion. It centered around the Roman Empire, as well as three other civilizations that they had added to the game. They had also updated the numbers and tweaked a little bit so that way it would be a more fair and balanced game to play which is just wild to think about that that's how we got our balances before. Today, we load a game in, we get a day one patch, and boom, they're balancing it every single day. But back then, you had to buy, literally buy, a separate patch with some extra content on it. It's just wild how things have changed. Ensemble Studios seemed to have captured lightning in a bottle. They had created the Age of franchise, which consisted of three mainline games and one spinoff. The spinoff was better, in my opinion. I really loved Age of Mythology. But they did so well that they had caught the eye of Microsoft. Microsoft bought the studio and they continued to work on their games for many years. However, due to natural attrition and loss of interest in the studio, eventually the studio just kind of closed down due to their main guy leaving and going somewhere else. It's kind of nice to see them actually organically die instead of being closed down by their owner. Microsoft was not about to let a successful franchise die. And as they should have, they remastered the old titles and re-released them. They started with the first game, updating it to 3D graphics. They updated the sounds, they updated the animations, and they balanced the units. This was done by Forgotten Empire, who worked on a lot of the Age of Empires Definitive Editions. We have only gotten through the history portion of this video, and we can already see some major differences between these two titles. But before we go ahead and dive deeper into the differences, I want to go ahead and invite you to hit that like button if you're enjoying what you're seeing here. That way I know what kind of content you enjoy and I can create more of this in the future. Age of Empires and its definitive counterpart are both RTS games or real-time strategy games. Games that are in this category are very similar to the turn-based strategies where you still have to do your resource management, exploration, your tech tree evolution, and your military to either conquest your enemies or to defend your interests. Uh, but the real-time aspect all happens in, well, real-time. You want to build a building? You got to wait real-time, baby. You want to get this unit? You ain't getting it now. You got to wait real-time. And that makes it a little more complicated because you have to do this all at once while your enemies are all coming at you. Now, whether you're playing with a friend or with an AI, both of these games play the same. There's a few minor tweaks here and there, but overall, the games feel very similar. So when you boot up either of these games, you're presented with an option of one of three different scenarios. You have your campaigns, you have your custom matches, and you have your multiplayer. The campaign mode was relatively the same for both. You would choose a civilization and you would be guided through scenarios that would show you their rise and their fall. What's interesting is if you read the text at the beginning, you absolutely could learn something about these civilizations and this could be a really neat learning tool. I did not do that. As a kid and an adult, I immediately go straight for the custom scenarios. In both games, you are able to customize every aspect of the game. How big the map is, always the biggest map size. How many players are in there, always the maximum amount of players. I even throw in some alliances in there, that way we can have some really nice big battles. It's a ton of fun. Now we go to the multiplayer mode. 
Both of them have it, and there is a difference between the two of them. In the old multiplayer, 1997, you could do it, but remember, the internet was dial-up, so it was a risk. You could be 20, 30 minutes into a game, your mom picks up a phone to call her friend, and boom, your internet is absolutely gone, and you lose all your progress. I am curious as to why that happened, so if anybody knows, let me know in the comments. With the newest edition, it has been upgraded. 20 years later, we learned something. We learned that telephone lines are not great for internet. You don't have that issue, so this one definitely goes to the definitive edition due to the multiplayer being much more stable. They even have a matchmaking system, which just blows my mind. It still works to this day. Depending on your scenario, you could start off with a handful of warriors and a couple of villagers, or just three villagers. These are your starting units. Now, villagers never change, whereas warriors will evolve through the different eras, getting more and more powerful. The villager, however, is still the most valuable unit. Don't let anybody kill them. In the 1997 version, you had quite a few different types of units available to you. The categories are as follows. Melee footmen, ranged footmen, horseback, siege equipments, and sea units. Combat was quite fun, especially when you mount a large army and just let chaos reign in your enemy's base. Look at that. The Definitive Edition didn't really change things here. Either uh, they added a few new units such as the Slinger, which is strong against archers and buildings, but overall the units look and feel like the source material. And in order to get those units, you gotta have buildings, baby! And Forgotten Empires did their homework when it comes to the buildings. There is little to no difference in how each building works between the 1997 version and the Definitive Edition of Age of Empires. So let's do a brief overview of the buildings. You have three different categories of buildings. You have your economic buildings, you have your militaristic buildings, and you have your technological buildings. Of course, it's not as clear cut as that. It is a little more convoluted. Some buildings can hybridize. For example, the two most useful buildings you'll have are the granary and the storage pit. The reason they're the most useful is because they provide economic support. They lower the amount of distance that your villager has to walk with resources in order to store it. But they're also a technological building because they hold key upgrades to your technological tree. That way you can unlock more buildings and more units. The most important building though is your town center. If you lose this, you lose your ability to make more villagers, which is never good. You can always defend this with your walls and your towers. Some of the most useful buildings that you actually get from the granary. I'm gonna level with you. If you're not so smart, like I am, this game can be hard. It feels like the artificial intelligence in both games has either a better starting position or passive resource management, or they start in a different era. It just doesn't feel right. And even at the lower difficulties, it can still be a challenge, like the AR just all coming in at you and not fighting each other. It's almost like they're cheating. You know what, though? <laughs> we can play fire with fire. Give that AI the pow pow. Two babies, riding trikes, mini guns a-blazing. Oh yeah, they're also the president. This, my dear viewers, is a relic from a bygone era, and boy am I happy to see it imported in this game. Back in the early days of gaming, cheat codes were all the rage. We didn't have modders to spice up games. Instead, we had big head mods, money cheats. The definitive edition including this into their game, brought a smile to my face, as I remember using these to clown on the AI when I got bored of the main game. One thing though, these cheat codes and models come directly from the first release. I was expecting them to upgrade it to the new graphics. I'm unsure about how to feel about the models being the same. On one hand, it's probably harder to get 2D sprites into a 3D engine. But on the other hand, maybe they're just being lazy and didn't want to make them 3D. As we had mentioned before, the 1997 version of Age of Empires ran on the 2D Genie engine, and the clarity of the game suffers from that. I'm not talking knowing your units from the enemy units, they used very bright colors as a clan indicator, so you never really had that problem. What I'm talking about is when I look at my own village, it feels like I am playing the Definitive Edition, but I am completely fucking hammered. It's an eyesore. Overall, in 2D, the game is just ugly. 
It's not easy to play this game for a long time, as it does strain your eyes to look at this mess for too long. The Definitive Edition fixed all these issues. Most likely, the issues were caused by the age of the game and were not the fault of the developers that they were limited, honestly, by the technology of the time. In the Definitive Edition, unit clarity is still a little bit of a mess. Since the character models are a little bland and their silhouettes are uninteresting, it's pretty easy to confuse one unit for another and have a villager accidentally in your Axeman troop. In order to remedy this, they should have taken the Riot approach. Say what you want about Riot. When they start developing a new champion, the first thing they think about is, what does the silhouette of this champion look like? This way it cannot be confused with other champions that already exist. If they would have done this, it would have been a lot more obvious that you're picking an Axeman instead of your villager, and you could have saved one of the villagers' lives. However, this problem does get less offensive as you get further in the eras. It's really a big problem in the Stone and Tool Age. Later, it doesn't become that big of an issue. I only have one word for the sound design for the 1997 version of this game, and that's annoying. Let's start with the music. The music definitely has the late 90s vibes when it comes to computer games. Honestly, I can kind of dig that. I, I don't mind the vibes that it's putting out, but you know what I can't dig? These fucking Axemen. The sounds that they make are so ear splitting and so annoying. As a child, I would not play these units because I just hated the way that they sound. They sound. I still do. You know what else is annoying? Me, when I was a kid. Every time you click on something, it makes a sound. This game literally, even to this day, will turn into a toy aisle. Try me? No, I'm going to try all of you. Oh my god, that's a lot better. They found where the volume mixer was. What Forgotten Empires had done is they had taken the entire sound design of Age of Empires and remodernized it. Now, when it comes to the music, honestly, I really like the old campy music of the late 1990s in a video game. I just love that. I wish they would allow you to have the old songs play. But boy, are those sound effects way better. You no longer have ear splitting strikes when it comes to the Axemen. The voice lines, they redone them. They're just a much higher quality, but they still sound true to the original. They did their homework, and it is easy to say that the Definitive Edition absolutely has better sound design. So my final conclusion is that the Definitive Edition of Age of Empires is the better product of the two. Nostalgia is absolutely a powerful thing. And as gaming gets older and older, we yearn for the old titles that we used to play as children, and we want to see them being remade. If each studio takes the same time, care, and effort that Forgotten Empire Studios did for this game, we have a bright future for these remakes. Forgotten Empires has taken an old game, given a new coat of paint, changed some of the mechanics, and captured the essence of the old game, what made us love Age of Empires in the first place, and re-released it for us to enjoy. When it comes to these remakes, we know that is not always the case. I'm sorry, I do have to bring up Warcraft 3 Reforged. That was a fucking disaster. Quite the opposite of what Age of Empires was. It was something that actually killed the potential of a revival of the RTS series for Warcraft, which Age of Empires did come out with a recent edition not too long ago. So it brings me to a question. With these two examples in front of you, should we continue to remake old iconic games? Should we follow the footsteps that Hollywood has paved ahead? Or should we focus more on the future? of new titles and creating new classics that we'll enjoy years to come. Please let me know in the comments. And this, my friends, does conclude the video. The next step, if you want to, of course, I would recommend downloading the Age of Empires Definitive Edition and giving it a whirl for yourself. It'll be a nice little time waster between now and when I'm able to release the next video. I will see you next time.